What's up my central unit, it's the central man here, so it's been ages since I did a WCW pay-per-view review. Uh, the last one I did was reviewing uh, Spring Stampede of 2000. The original installment for this WCW pay-per-view review, originally I was supposed to be reviewing Capital Combat 1990. Unfortunately, I had second thoughts, you know, didn't feel like it. I feel like I need to review a better WCW pay-per-view. No disrespect, I will review uh, Capital Combat in the near future, so in this installment I'm going to review WCW Bash of the Beach 1994. This is the very first Bash of the Beach event, and this pay-per-view is memorable, this is marked as Hulk Hogan's first pay-per-view appearance, and also his first one-on-one -on -one match with Ric Flair for the title in the main event, I'll get to that later on. And this is not the only uh, beach themed WCW pay-per-view between 92 and 93. They did Beach Blast, they'll let on become Bash of the Beach. And Bash of the Beach went on to become WCW's, like basically their flagship event. They will continue to do more Bash of the Beach events until 2000 before WCW went out of business in 2001. Bash of the Beach 94. At the, really at the Orlando Arena, now the Mway Arena in Orlando, Florida on the 17th of July 1994. The tagline for the show is called Hoax WCW Debut. The attendance for the show was 14,000 and the buy rate for this pay-per-view was 1.4. Um, the commentary team on this show kind of like switch a little bit. Like one moment is Tony Schiavone and Bobby Heenan and the next thing it's Tony Schiavone and Jesse Ventura. Anyway, the uh, quick Rousseau in the dark match. The dark match, we had the Armstrongs, Brian and Brad Armstrong, defeating Steve Kern and Bobby Eaton. The opener match of Bash of the Beach 94, we got the WCW TV title match between Lord Stephen Regal with Sir William in Regal's corner. Def yeah, defending the TV title against Johnny B. Bad. Originally, it was supposed to be Regal versus Sting for the TV title. Unfortunately, Sting suffered an eye injury, so, yep, uh, Johnny B. Bad took his place, he's Sting's replacement. And this was a good opener, you know, like both, like, Regal and Mark Merrow, they are really good workers. You know, it's back and forth, you know, good technical style wrestling. Um, in the end, um, B. Bad was going for, like, a roll-up. But instead, Regal kind of like counted into a cradle of his own to win this match and retain the TV title. And yeah, um, Johnny B. Bad went on to be in WCW until 1996. You know, he had a few with DDP and he went on to have a run in WWF with with her, you know, with his uh, wife Sable. Anyway, afterwards, he had, um, he had Steven Regal confronting uh, Antonio Inoki because they did a segment. You know, for Antonio Inoki to accept his award. And then Regal got pissed off because... Talking about, like, I wrestle in Japan facing your wrestlers. Why I didn't got this award. You know, I don't know if it's a Hall of Fame or a Lifetime Ascension Award. I don't know. And you kind of have Regal kind of, like, confronting... Yeah, an Inoki. And Inoki kind of, like, um... I think they were going for Regal and Inoki... Unfortunately, that never happened because I had heard rumors like Anoki fought Ric Flair in the WCW pay-per-view in Korea. Um, I don't know why they did that. I don't. I don't understand why they never did Anoki versus Regal. That could be a good match because Anoki is a good wrestler back in his day, and Regal is like one of the most underrated wrestlers, and he's one of the best. Anyway, so. That was the opener, the second match of Bash of the Beach 94. We got Vader with Hall, Hall of Famer, or future Hall of Famer, Harley Race in Vader's corner versus the Guardian Angel. The Guardian Angel is, you know, Ray Trailer, the formerly known as Big Boss Man in WWF. Before doing the Guardian's Angel gimmick, he was the boss. Unfortunately, I think WWF, uh, not WWF, uh, WCW got in trouble by the WWF because his ritual gimmick, the boss, his gimmick was similar to the Big Boss, uh, Big Boss Man gimmick, what his old gimmick in the World Wrestling Federation. So he kind of like WCW kind of change up his gimmick a bit. This was not a good match. It was okay, but bit of clusterfuck. I think one of them, I think it was Vader or uh, I call him Ray Trailer. 
One of them did like a sunflip power bomb, and one of them kind of botched it. I'm not saying you know they are good wrestlers, but you know, one of them just fucked up a move. In the end, um, you know the Guardian Angel. Really, Angel saw Holly Race with the nightstick. He took the nightstick away from Holly Race, and unfortunately, the referee saw uh, Angel holding the, the nightstick, and then the referee called for the bell for the disqualification because uh, Angel did not hit Vader. Yeah, it was a bad match. Don't want to go into it. Um, and then we got match number three. We got a tag team match between. R. Anderson and Dustin Rhodes versus Terry Funk and Bunkhouse Buck with Ming and Colonel Robert Parker. I think mean, in this feud, Dustin Rhodes is feuding with Colonel Parker and Bunkhouse Buck. And he asked for uh, R. Anderson to be his tag team partner. He kind of accept. This match was actually was a decent tag team match. It wasn't bad. It wasn't like wow, this was a four and five star classics. It was a decent for what it is, serve its purpose. This sometimes it's more, this was more like a handicap match more than a um a tag team match. You know, it's basically like just you know Dustin Rhodes versus Terry Funk and Bunkhouse Buck. Any any Arn Anderson, Dustin's uh, tag team partner, turn on uh, Dustin. Uh, uh, Double A hit the DDT onto Dustin Rhodes. You had Terry Funk and Bunkhouse Buck got, scored the victory. And then after that, Anderson, Funk, and Buck kind of beat the crap out of uh, Dustin Rhodes. I think they gone, really in, went on to injure the arm of Dustin Rhodes. It's it just basically just pro pro progressing storyline between the feud between Colonel Parker and you know, Bunkhouse Buck versus Dustin Rhodes, you know. I think like Ro Ar Ar Anderson kind of teamed up with this faction, you know, with Colonel Parker, Burnhouse Buck, Terry Funk, you know. Anyway, so that's match number three. Match number four, we got the WCW United States title match between Steve Austin, not Stone Cold yet, Stunning Steve Austin, taking on Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. It's basically like. Old school versus new school because you know Rick, Ricky Steamboat is old school. You know, multiple time WCW World Champion taking on an upper class Steve Austin who will become not just the biggest star in the WWF but the biggest star in the pro wrestling business. Back and forth, and this was a hidden gem. Yeah, it was back and forth between Austin and Ricky Steamboat because Austin's run in WCW, in my opinion, is underrated. It was, yeah, back and forth between. You know, like near falls. Um, in the end, you had basically like Steamboat was going for like a crossbody. I think Austin kind of countered it into like a roll up to score the score the match. Uh, really score the victory and retain the title. And I think this was Ricky Steamboat's final. Really, not just Ricky Steamboat's final WCW pay per view appearance. Actually, this was really Ricky Steamboat's final wrestling match because I think at the next pay per view, uh, Fall Brawl '94, I think they were going for the uh, Bash the Beach uh, rematch between Austin for Steamboat for the United States title. Ricky Steamboat retired due to back injury. The next um, wrestling match for Steamboat would be 15 years later. In the feud with Chris Jericho in the WWE, you know, you know the handicap match between Jericho at WrestleMania 25 and also facing Jericho one on one at Backlash 09. I did cover that pay per view on this channel. Yeah, this was a really good match between Austin and Steamboat for the US title. Then we got the WCW Tag Team Title match between Katzis Jack and Kevin Sullivan. With, uh, with I'm guessing like you got you got Dave Sullivan. I'm guessing Dave Sullivan is basically like. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure they're related. Uh, the, yeah, they defend the tag team titles against Pretty Wonderful, the two Pauls, Orndorff and Roma. <sighs> mix. I'm having mixed bag off this match. It was good. You know, showcased a lot of techno style wrestling, but at the same time, it was a bit boring in my opinion. This match was 20 minutes. You know, the the last match, uh, Austin and Steamboat for the U.S. title was 20 minutes. This was also 20 minutes. It had no business to be a 20 minutes match. I wish they cut it down by like, I don't know, 5 to 10 minutes. That's my opinion. And they opened a match between Regal versus Johnny B. Bad for the United States, uh, not the United States title, but the TV title. That was about 10 minutes. I don't understand that. So, I, I, I'm not going to go in details uh, much, too much. Um, in the end, the, um, you got uh, Orndorff and Roma won the tag team titles. 
you had like basically had uh, Orndorff pinning Katz's Jack, and you know you got Roma holding Katz's Jack's foot while the referee did not saw to win it. Yeah, win this match, become the new tag team titles uh, champions. Sorry, and yeah, and this was Katz's Jack's final WCW pay per view appearance before going to ECW because of her rumors like he was frustrated because you know his position in WCW. I don't want to go into it because this is another topic. For another time. Uh, for the Pretty Wonderfuls that went on to hold the belt for two months before losing it to, I think it's called the American Air Force. There's basically like, you know, Buff Bagwell's, uh, not before Buff, Buff Bagwell, it was Marcus Bagwell uh, tag team. That was in uh, 1994 and then also, I think he did a few with Holland Heat. Not 100% sure. I don't want to get into it too much. Anyway, so moving on to the main event. We got Ric Flair defending the WCW Championship against Hulk Hogan. Originally, they should have done this match at WrestleMania 8 in the World Wrestling Federation. Unfortunately, I can guess some politics played a massive part. Why they didn't do Ric Flair versus Hogan? Because they did the whole real world championship storyline in WWF. You know, you had uh, Flair versus Savage for the title at WrestleMania 8. And also, Hogan would face Sid in the, in the main event. You know, Hogan's last match in WWF was against Yokozuna when, when, while Hogan was the WWF Championship. He dropped the belt to Yoko because he didn't want to drop uh, drop the belt to Brett. He went on to have a run in New Japan. He did a film, you know, filming of Trouble in Paradise. And her rumours, the backstory is that uh, Jesse Ventura walked out in the main event. I think he went on, got fired from WCW because he hates Hulk Hogan because... Her stories like Hogan and Ventura are best friends, and then ever since 1994, early in 1994, because Hogan kind of testified against Fence because Fence was in in trial because he was subclient, he was smuggling uh, steroids to the wrestlers. Um. Anyway, so yeah, this was really good. This it had a little bit of a WrestleMania feeling with Hulk Hogan. You had a uh, Mr. T, um, and Shaquille O'Neal. And also, you got Ric Flair with uh, Sensational Sherry in his corner. Yeah, yeah, Shaquille O'Neal. I think he was in Ric Flair's corner. Um, anyway, so this match was good. I, I think this was match of the night. I'm not a huge fan of Hogan. He was never good in the ring. But I feel like Hogan and Flair had some magic in this match. I think mean, it was too much of overbooking a little bit sometimes with Sensational Sherry interfering. Sherry kind of interfered too much. Like, like one more of the match when the referee got knocked out. Sherry did like a, a splash onto Hogan. Yeah, she kind of interfered a little bit. Really in too much in my opinion. If it did it once or twice, I'd be okay. But she did it like three or four times. You know, but yeah, they told a good story. Yeah, the funny part, you had uh, Mr. T carried Cessation Sherry out of the building. Um, In the end, Hogan hit the leg drop onto Ric Flair to win this match and become the WCW champion. First of many matches for Hogan and Flair in WCW. I think they had... Little bit matches in WWE in 2002 and the uh, mini feud in TNA decades later. So, and also Bobby Heenan got pissed off because you know, they because Bobby Heenan hate Hulk Hogan because because going back to the days in the World Wrestling Federation in the 80s. So, yeah, it was a good you know. In, in the end, my final rate for WCW Bash of the Beach 94. I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. A really good show, you know, like um. The opener was really good. Um, Austin Rick Steamboat for the um, United States title was good, and the main event was good. Good, told a good story. You know, I think match of the night for me. Uh, I don't know. It's between Austin Steamboat for the U.S. title or Hogan, uh, not Flair versus Hogan for the WCW World title. It's one of them. Um, the uh, the Terry Funk and Bunkhouse Buck versus um, Dustin Rose and Arn Anderson. It's basically just. Building up, progressing in the storyline. It was good, but nothing great. The tag team title match was eh. Uh, Fader versus the Guardian Angel was not a good match, in my opinion. So, yeah, so that's my review of WCW Bash the Beach 94. Hope you like it. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Smash the like button and subscribe to the uh, Central Mind Network on YouTube for more wrestling reviews and more. Next time on this WCW pay per view review segment. I'm going to review, go back to the 1996 WCW period, really during the NWO period. I'm going to review WCW Hogwile 96. This is The Central Man, officially signing out. Check you later.